Tipping the scales just over the 3,500 pound mark. A uh, pretty nicely kept 191 Freedom Express here at Halet RV coming in on trade. I believe they were actually so happy with this. I think they're trading up to a larger 279 Freedom Express. We have enough coming in and out. I have a hard time keeping it all straight sometimes. This is the predecessor to that ultra popular 192 RBS that you find here at Halet RV. This is the model that existed before it had a slide out. It maybe doesn't have quite all the widgets and whiz bangs of a brand new Freedom Express, but it's not beat up, it's lighter weight, and frankly, there's some things about this floor plan that I actually personally like a little bit better than the new 192. And it is just really, it's incredible to me the dichotomy between um, RVs that are well kept and RVs that are a little bit neglected. And thankfully this falls well within the realm of the more well-kept varieties. There's a couple little homegrown DIY kind of solutions, storage solutions here that we're going to see, but overall I don't see where they like hillbilly jerry rig nothing. They didn't take a claw hammer and bang nothing up. Overall, looks pretty good in here. Now, one thing I do want to make mention of very quickly is you hear me talk all the time on our new Freedom Expresses at Halet RV, how they have a six foot nine interior. This is a six and a half foot. This is actually what I would call a generation two Freedom Express. This is before they went extra tall, which is gen three. And this is after they went uh, to the tan skin. Obviously you've seen that. So there's there's been, uh, this, this isn't the initial round of Freedom Expresses. This is after they had a chance to really kind of do some work on it, dial some things in and, and, and really make these things hum. And I think it shows here very, very nicely. Now it is a non-centralized air unit but it's a small rig. Other than just the bathroom, everything's pretty much one room here. So the bathroom might not get quite as much airflow as everything else. It'll probably be okay given the size of the RV. Carpetless, ventless, all things that people enjoy today. Sealed surface uh, countertops, sealed edge, I should say. Sealed surface almost sounds like solid surface, which is not what I'm implying, but the sealed countertops. Now your counter space here is limited. So the previous owners, what they did here is they basically nullified the stovetop. They didn't cook on the stovetop very much, but they wanted prep space. So what they did here is they just put this little plexiglass kind of cover over the top of it. That could be removed. You see the stovetop uh, grate basically is still there. Uh, they just, they needed some more prep area. So, you know, that makes sense. You can see that utensil drawer down there below that stone cast sink which is another thing we don't see very much of in today's business because people look at it and they see white, so they assume plastic. Stonecast really has a lot of the benefits of stainless steel. It's not plastic. You can touch it. You can feel it's a different thing. It's rated for up to 500 degrees. It's super impact resistant. It's great. The uh, folks look like, I believe they probably added this TV themselves. No, that's a Legend Brain TV. That would be a factory television right there. And that is on a swing arm mount. It's buckle strapped to the wall so it doesn't jiggle in transit. But you could pivot that around a little bit for some evening viewing from the bed. Another difference on this compared to today's Freedom Expresses. Here in the Gen 2 generation, they hadn't yet adopted a full true queen. That is still a 60 by 74 short queen. That is a shorty. And uh, I hope you appreciate the fact that we will take time to point stuff like that out. Some people will certainly not like that feature, but even knowing that, we're still not going to like kind of hide it from you. You know, we want you to know what you're getting into. Now, um, when I say they had a couple little homegrown solutions, this is what I mean. I'm guessing they needed some kind of little phone pocket or maybe a, a little place to keep some remote controls next to the bed. You see how they kind of, what they actually did, it looks like a little plastic organizer tote or a miniature trash can in there. I'm not sure exactly what that might be. Uh, and this right here, this is a full RV cover. The folks obviously used it. You'll see that when we go outside, it looks terrific. So this is again, this RV is yet another good example of why I'm such a big proponent of RV covers. Because if you keep the sunshine off of these things, it is just, it's incredible. It's a night and day difference between how they look after even just a few years, you know? Cabinetry is pocket screwed, by the way. So you've got screws actually going directly into a wood core. I believe there's some MDF facing on there. Give us a call if you need explanation of any of that. We're happy to fill in. This over here looks like an old cabinet door, maybe, that somebody applied to a countertop flip up. That is definitely not a factory item. I think maybe that's something where somebody wanted to sit at the end of the bed and do some laptop work perhaps like a mini flip up desk space. I'm not exactly sure there. Um, I noticed too, 
that they had uh, created their own little hole here, basically like a shoe garage to get to the storage below the bench ends. This was made again before Freedom Express had adopted some doors on the end of those. And it's kind of interesting because there's a bunch, you can see a bunch of little updates since this was made that are now applied to the new Freedom Expresses, but all those things add a little bit of weight, a little bit of cost, and that's why this thing is, well, of course it's less expensive because it is in the used market, but also less weight. But I tell you what, they didn't skimp on storage. You can see how you've got that. Basically, what's going to be your pantry on the left-hand side under the stereo unit. And then some bonus hanging storage space or like a, a jacket closet right by the entry door. And it seems uncommon to have the stereo basically on the opposite side of the RV from the television. That is a DVD unit as well. Not Bluetooth, just DVD and stereo. But if you're walking, like if you're outside... You know, you've got this awesome campsite viewing window over here so you can see what's going on. You can just pop in the door right there. You can change whatever's on the radio, turn it up or down or pause it or whatever you need to to talk to your neighbors, you know. It's a it's an unconventional but actually really smart placement for it. It reminds me a lot of what motorized RVs do. And there might be a trend there because Coachman has such a robust motorized division, they might have kind of borrowed a little bit of inspiration from that group. You see the utensil drawer. Now, the camper's not level, so some of these things are not wanting to stay open for me, unfortunately. I think you get the idea there. And again, if we need to get you some extra photos or information of something, you give our team members a call. We'll hop out here, get whatever you need. We just need a chance to meet you. And this is interesting back here because until very recently, the, the bathroom of the newer 192 Freedom Express with the sofa slide, uh, it looked almost exactly like this. So this, once again, this model, although that sofa slide has certainly changed the floor plan significantly, it's always kind of neat to me to see one that came just a few years previous to kind of get an idea of almost like the, um, almost like fossil record of campers. <laughs> and thankfully they just not only had that cover, but they actually used it to keep the RV looking good the way it does right here. This thing looks fantastic. Now this is an Asdell uh, RV, which is far more common today. When this was built, people didn't even know about it. What's funny is we rarely even used to talk about Asdell on RVs like Freedom Expresses, just because it, nobody knew what it was. It meant so little. Freedom Express was way ahead of the curve on that. Coachman was, I, I believe, the first mainstream adopter of Asdell out there. I don't know that they always get the credit they deserve for that. Kind of like that huge front storage compartment. Uh, when this was made, ultralight RVs, they were smaller. They had very limited storage. A lot of times reducing cabinet capacity was one of the weight saving measures to keep them lighter weight. And Freedom Express was one of the very first that said, forget that. We got to have storage in this thing. Like you saw all the good cabinet space on that rear wall in there, that big full front pass through. When these came out, they had the largest front pass through out there of anybody else in this class. And that concept has since been adopted by a lot of others. Now it is short and uh, light on that tandem axle. This is an easy towing kind of thing. Like if you got a good tow package SUV or like a a Ranger or a Colorado Canyon, something like that, those kind of vehicles, this would be a really good fit. No ladder on the back, but it uh, is a walkable roof, by the way. That, that, their roof structure hasn't changed over the years. And again, I'm not seeing any sun fade, weather checking, cracking of decals. Power awning over here looking pretty good. Those aluminum wheels down below looking all right. Tinted windows keeping the sunshine out as well as the nosy neighbors giving you a little bit more privacy. Those also help keep the RV a little bit cooler inside, by the way. Overall, I'm happy with what I see and I don't predict it's going to last long just because of the, the size and the weight and the good condition here. So if what you're looking for is something that's short, light, and that's all right, give us a call here at Halet RV. The sun is shining, we're feeling fine. Looking forward to meeting you when it's the right time. I did not do that on purpose, but I'll take it. <laughs> I had a good ring to it. So uh, give us a ring. If you have any other questions, if uh, something I haven't covered, if there's anything else you need to know, let us know. We'll take care of you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Okay.